be familiar with with e-racing on Zwift. Uh, many of you won't be, but generally the races that we have on Zwift are between 20 and 30 minutes long, so quite an intense effort. And this this ride today, although it's 27 Ks, obviously half of it is up a mountain. So it's going to be a far longer drawn out effort. It may actually pan out more like a traditional road event. We'll have to see. This is the first of its kind. But as you said, Rob, two riders just going clear here, still 25 kilometers to go. And it'll be about 15 kilometers of rolling terrain through the volcano before we hit the bottom of the climb. But riders, I think, just using this opportunity as we head through the center of this volcano just to bed themselves in and make sure they're fresh and ready for that finishing climb. And the interesting thing for me, Rob, is going to be how they, they ride against each other. They've all got a DS. They've all got their own team plan. They've all got a team leader. It's just going to be interesting to see how this rolls out and how they race against each other, which we've never seen before. Well, I'm just looking at this group here, Matt, with 25.5 kilometres to go. We've seen two riders off at the front. One man who's not in this group is Ben Swift, the British champion. So I have a feeling he might have put in one of the first digs there. Alongside him, I'm hearing it may well be Chris Lawless, but we'll have to get a double take on that. With 2.8 kilometres ridden, four kilometres, four minutes, pardon me, up the road. And you can see, I think that's one of the power-ups being used, Matt. It is. It's the burrito that makes this rider on draft for 15 seconds. And it is Rivera who has gone clear. That's a bit of a surprise. Good little move by the Neo Pro using that power up early on. Now, just to explain a little bit about the when these riders get the power up, so we understand on this particular course, as we look at Brandon Rivera there, just tapping out 300 watts, um, he uh, the power ups are on the start line. They get one. They get one through the finishing banner in the volcano. And then, Rob, there are three random power ups at undisclosed points on the final climb. So how each rider uses those power-ups is gonna be absolutely crucial and could actually make a difference between who wins and who loses this race. Plenty of ride-ons being given to the riders in the bunch there as Rivera not really getting too much of a distance on the wheel of another of the riders further up. It's been a pretty quick start this, Matt, as we're going through the volcano part of the world. And from here, we will then head off underwater, I believe. Yeah, underwater, then through the jungle for a bit. It is uh, it is a cracking course as we look at Geraint Thomas. Well, he stripped his top off already, bearing that <laughs> chest. First time we've seen that. We normally see him in his Castelli top, but uh, no, the smiling face of Geraint Thomas. And it is worth mentioning as we see that wonderful picture in picture, looking at his stats there. That's his wattage on the left-hand side. RPM, that's how many, uh, how many pedal revolutions per minute. He's not showing us his heart rate, but his average speed there, Rob, was 49 kilometers an hour. But to raise money for charity, um, he is going to book for, the, I believe, the NHS. He's going to do three back-to-back. 12 hour rides on Zwift over the next three days. So fair play to him. Yes, 12 hour shifts. For those of you watching around the world, the NHS is the British National Health Service. And in light of what's going on at the minute, he's going to be riding from 7.30 each morning for three mornings, 12 continuous hours in his garage. And I think you can watch him on Zwift and on a webcam as well. So he's been getting that webcam set up and today's a good test for it as we have a look at Cameron Worth experience he was a former bike rider actually the australian he did quit professional cycling but he's been into triathlon and he's come back to it this year as another move goes off the front and matt they're going here and putting digs in on what is a real difficult uphill terrain slightly off road here too yeah, they're, they're, they're on this particular section, there are uh, actual, actually gravel sections. We're actually having on Zwift now more and more gravel trails. You can actually pick your bike. So the riders will actually feed, feel through the bike, the resistance on their home trainers. They will feel as if they're actually riding through gravel. Obviously not so much the bumpiness of the gravel itself, but the added resistance. So this is going to be pretty hard. There's a couple of little rolling climbs, which are going to mean the riders are going to have to lean on to the power a little bit. This is a tough little section. This is called the Italian Villas, as they're just going to be rolling through now, uh, there now. But as you said, Cameron Worth, a rider who rode for the Cannondale squad back up until 2014, and then has been uh, participating primarily in triathlons and has been re-signed at the start or well, the end of January this year. But uh, a really reliable workhorse for the squad, looking good at the moment. Yeah, replacement for Vasil Kirienko, who was uh, unfortunately forced to retire at the start of the year. Now, here we go, another move. It is a top top rider against the clock it's Filippo Gan now we can see him on screen and look at the power he's putting out there well above Oof. 500 watts and he's used to this Matt as the world individual pursuit champion on the track 
Yeah, I mean, he is one of the fastest men on the planet. He's four times individual pursuit champion. He broke the record, Rob, as you alluded to. Um, he's completed that 4,000 metres. The world record time, 4.01934, which is extraordinary. He's still only 23 years of age, but, uh, you know, consummate time trialers. And this move is looking good, but 500 watts with still 22 kilometres to go. Well, it's definitely forced to split. And it looks like that breakaway is going clear. It looks as though a little move is able to go clear. Maybe a little bit of sitting up or relative sitting up behind after eight minutes. Looks as though we've been racing almost six kilometers to go and just over 22 kilometers still remain. Remember, it's all about the last 10 Ks or so and that race up the hill. And I think, Matt, it looks as though they're out of sight. Yeah, they have definitely moved clear here. And I'm just, uh, if we get back to the head of the race, I'm just wondering exactly what the, comp the composition is I remember, but there's, uh, well, there's well, the here we go. Right in front. There we go, Matt. It is Lawless, Rowe, Ganna, and Swift. It's a four man break, and we have one chaser at 12 seconds who is Ian Stannard. And you can just see there e Ethan Hayter. Well, he is in the bunch, and I think that's a more relaxed look. Just 245 watts. You can see they're sitting up a little bit and giving this group out half a minute now. Yeah, Ethan Hayter, uh, new signing for. Team Ineos, only 21 years of age, a double stage winner of the Tour de l'Avenir and a double stage winner in the Baby Giro d'Italia as well, a really classy rider. But uh, one thing it is worth mentioning, if you are tuning in for the very first time and watching this, uh, this race, is that the riders do get the benefit when they're sat on the wheel of drafting. It is, it's not exactly like the real world, but there's a real benefit. And look at Terry Gagan Hart here. He's sat in the wheels, <laughs> Rob, texting us. I wonder if he's, I wonder who he's texting. Is he texting his, uh, the rest of the team to tell him what's going on? Very, very interesting. I'll tell you indeed. what, Matt, while he's texting away, it's probably a good time for us while the breakaway has just gone to go and have a look and see what Chris Froome told Ola Shenui at the start of the day. Great stuff. So Chris, tell me, where are you in the world and how's it all going for you at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm down in the down in the south of France at the moment uh, on lockdown, like like everyone else. But uh, it's it's going well. It's going well. I mean, uh, staying really busy, obviously, with with the kids every day and uh, doing as much training as I can on on the turbo trainer and and a lot of gym work as well. But uh, yeah, we're all driving each other mental, but uh, <laughs> getting getting through it. The same for all of us, Chris. Uh, I've got to ask you, how's the recovery going? The recovery is going really well. Um, I'd go as far as saying it's it's pretty much complete. Um, I mean, I, I am still doing some exercises off the bike just to strengthen that that right side which was injured. But um, I, I'm back into normal training loads again, and 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 that's going really well. So, Chris, it's going to be a busy day for you today, really, isn't it? The grip ride, first of all, though, what are you most looking forward to with that? I think it's I think it's just a great opportunity for us. Uh, riders to be able to interact with our fans. I mean, obviously at the moment we're we're not out there racing. We're not being interviewed. We're um, we're not really in the public eye. I mean, I guess everyone's everyone's on lockdown at the moment. So it's a great opportunity for us, us and our fans to to be able to get out and do a ride together, um, which we, we would never normally get the opportunity to do. And it looks like you guys used a meetup on Zwift to recon the Alp to Zwift yesterday. How, how helpful was that? <laughs> that? That was good yesterday. I mean, I'd, I'd never been up Alp to Zwift before, and it's, uh, uh, yeah, not, not, not too far off Alp to Wes as far as I see. So it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty solid race later. How does it compare to Alp to Wes then? Yeah, we were just going easy yesterday. So I, I think Alp see how it goes in the race but I, I imagine it's going to feel like going flat out from the bottom to the top of up to it. Chris you're being a bit cagey there what can you tell us about your form what kind of legs do you have for this <laughs> race later? <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah I mean I'm, I'm feeling good training has been going really well so we'll we'll see how it goes on uh, on the climb later on today. Thank you Chris Thanks this is very awkward doing it this way it could be the future. Cheers. Group hug. Thanks for everything. Oh, group hug. Social distancing virtual group hug. <laughs> well, there's a bit of social distancing going on out there on the road at the moment. We have five riders up the road. They are Lawless, Swift, Roe, Ganna and Stannard. Five of the six teams represented. It seems that the only team not represented is Team 5, Team Zurek 
That's being led by Eddie Dunbar, and I think they are the ones having to do the chasing here, Matt. Yeah, well, it's uh, Eddie Dunbar's team, as you said, Team Zurich there. They have missed out. I mean, that means you'd imagine if they want to bring this back, that they have to start working together. The other teams are going to look to them to do the chasing, you'd have thought. So Eddie Dunbar, his teammates, Teo Gegenhardt, Jonathan Castro Viejo, Jonathan Narvaez, and Mikel Golash, uh, who I believe named the team. Oli Cookson is their DS. They need to get together. They've got a 16 second lead at the moment. Uh, looks like Lawless has just drifted off the front of that little group out in front. But when you look at the composition of this squad and you look at the terrain, Rob, that is still to come, it's it's a the composition is more of a your ruler type. It's your classic specialist. Lawless, of course, the winner of the Tour of Yorkshire last year. Ben Swift, for current British road champion. Stanard, of course, double winner of Het Newsblad. Luke Rowe, top well, fifth, of course, a couple of years back in the Tour of Flanders. And Ghana, and Ghana, one of the biggest rulers. You wonder if... They could survive on the climb itself. But what it has done is put the pressure on Dunbar's team. They need to chase. If you look in the top right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the terrain to come, the gradient. For those of you getting too excited, maybe a little early on, and thinking that we're on the Alpe de Zwift already, hold your horses, because we've 18.9 kilometres to go. This is the first little rise away from our opening landmass, where we have the Italian villas there. And we're about to head up now and head towards the jungle in a moment. And these are the riders who are up ahead, the five riders. We're looking at uh, Filippo Ganna on screen there, 350 watts away. And they've got a lead of 22 seconds over the rest of the bunch. And, and as we called there, it is Dunbar's team that's doing the work. You can see in sixth, seventh and eighth place, Goash, Rivera and Dunbar. And they're the ones alternating the pace, trying to pull this back. Yeah, they certainly That's Ben are. Swift, just... 383 watts. Pardon me, Matt, but we're getting a look at uh, the British champion in his pain cave. Yeah, he's looking good. All the jerseys of the various years of Team Sky. He was uh, one of the riders that uh, joined Team Sky almost from its... Ex it's now back in the fold and uh, rewarded that trust with the win in the National Road Championship for a very, very fast rider indeed. Does a lot of miles on this, knows the platform very, very well. As you look at the jerseys that he's in, it is worth the on the jerseys because... It seems as though uh, everybody's down on the internet down in London and getting in the way with Matt. Matt, are you back with us? I sh Can you hear me? Ah, there you go. I, th I think yeah, everybody was logging on at once. Bank holiday, and they must have all been logging on to watch this. Sorry about that, but you're back with us. No worries. I was just explaining that uh, Castelli, who are the, uh, the the clothing sponsor of Team Ineos, have designed a special race kit just for this event. There's a special hands-on logo, and it's a project to support the COVID-19 relief. So special jerseys designed for Castelli just for this very race. If you take a close look, there's a lot of detail that goes into these avatars. A lot of riders sporting quite a bit of facial hair and some funky shades. They can design their own look, but... Uh... We're going to obviously see pictures of them in their own garages, front rooms, terraces, wherever they are in the, around the world. And there's some quite exotic locations. Egan Bernal is, of course, up there at altitude in Colombia. We've got a few riders in Andorra. We've got riders in the United Kingdom as well. And uh, there's 28 seconds of a lead at the moment. 17.7 kilometres to go. Still going uphill here. You see the road surface not amazing. And, and that all counts, doesn't it, Matt, on Zwift as well? Because depending on the type of turbo trainer these guys are using, they can feel the road beneath them. Yeah, they can. There are some turbo trainers that actually resonate depending on the model that you've got. But uh, we know that uh, Team uh, Team Ineos all use the same trainer. They all use Wahoo trainers. So there will be a consistency on the trainers. So everybody will have the, exactly the same kind of feedback on, uh, on on with the trainer in relation to the way the road rises, the road falls, and whether they're riding on, on board walks, whether they're riding on gravel, whether, whether they're riding on cobbles. Um, so there's a real kind of, uh, there's a real, real world feel to uh, to riding on these trainers uh, these days and as i say standardized across the board for these riders and and just another quick note we've we mentioned uh, ride ons these little floating thumbs above these riders if anybody's wondering what they are it's kind of the uh, the zwift equivalent from the zwift community the equivalent of a like on facebook or a like on instagram or twitter the riders can log on uh, anybody in the zwift community can log on and uh, give these riders just to show their appreciation because we have an enormous community on zwift now connecting everybody together well, 11 and a half kilometers gone. So, Egan, we are, are now looking at Egan Bernal. 
are you in the world right now and how is your training situation? Now I'm training at, at home, doing some turbo. Uh, so, yeah, I think that I'm lucky because I'm in a good place. I am at, in my home, so I can share some time with my family. And uh, I'm enjoying this 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 time with, with them. So, yeah, I think that it's not uh, too bad for me at the moment. It looks like you've become quite a fan of Zwift recently as well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we will do this 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 race in, in Sunday. Uh, I'm really happy for that because uh, um, you know when you just train, train, and train, and at home, in doing some turbo, you you need to to have some to have some fun. So uh, for sure, will be something different uh, for us. It will be a really different day. What can we expect from the race itself from you? For sure, you don't need to, to expect too much from me, from me because um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be the leader. I will be the leader, but uh, for sure another guy will be the the the. I uh, know I'll be the captain, not the leader, not the leader. Yeah, you will be racing at altitude, which is obviously a big advantage. Uh, for training, not so much for racing. And you'll be racing earlier in the day as well than everyone else. What kind of a difference will that make? For me, it's, it's perfect. It's the, the time when I normally train. So yeah, at least I will have a advantage. But uh, yeah, for sure for, for the race, when you need to push in the altitude, uh, you can do too much but. So yeah, it will be something different. But uh, yeah, I think that the most important is to, to enjoy it and I will try to, to help the guys who will be in the at the sea level and yeah, I think that will be something nice. We have not raced from, from a long time and and for sure we will try to to enjoy it and to to keep really hard even even more in that in a normal race because we have nothing to lose here. So we will try to, to do our best. We are uh, riding uh, and we will compete with uh, uh, our friends and our mates and if you want to to see what will happen with Jan and Frumi and Angie this is a good opportunity to see and you can just enjoy this 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 race and just have some fun well Egan Bernal the man who won the Tour de France last year just taking all the pressure off himself as we look at Ian Standard still in the breakaway there one of five riders up the road with Ganna Swift Row and Lawless. The gap's gone down to about 23 seconds and it looks as though the weather might not be turning out to be that good in the virtual world map. Yeah, it's actually that the it looks like I don't not too sure if it's early morning or it's it's the evening, but the clouds have, have uh, rolled across the sky. It's quite gloomy within uh, this forest here. You can just see the vines hanging down. Again, this is one of my favourite parts uh, of Watopia. Um, they're on the gravel surface now, just coming through. This is part of the they're going through the Aztec ruins very very shortly. But but Rob, a really interesting point there from Egan Bernal, which we which we should dwell on, is the fact that. As well as this being the first time Team Ineos have faced off each other, the first time we've raced and he raced up the Alpes as um, we, um, we've never seen riders compete against each other at different altitudes. Now, there are 10 riders within Team Ineos that are actually riding at altitude. And as we know, if you're riding at altitude, your ability, your, your ability to uptake oxygen is drastically reduced. Some of the riders in yeah, normally Yeah, here's one of them as well, Matt. You can see Egan Bernal's got his shades on outside. He has indeed. He's looking very, very cool, isn't he? He's gone for the, uh, the single under jersey, getting the guns on show, which is always good to see. Luke Rowe, picture in picture as well, full guns on show. But no, we've never seen anything like this before. Riders racing head to head at different kind of altitudes. Um, so I think we may, may see different fluctuations in performance in relation to the guys who, uh, who are at altitude, especially the Northern Europeans who are currently living at altitude, Rob. It's worth, worth mentioning that. Well, Bernal back in the bunch at the moment, 25 seconds from the five-man breakaway you're seeing on the right-hand side of your screen. In terms of what he achieved last year when he was at top shape, there was no excuse. Matt, Egan Bernal, the first Colombian to win the Tour de France. He's 23 now. Here is him winning the Tour last year. Yeah, I mean, what a performance. It showed such maturity at such a tender age. And I mean, he's still only 23 years of age, but it was, you know, a performance of maturity, of strength. Of course, it was a foreshortened tour, but I don't think that would take anything away from him, especially when you look at the, the lead in to that victory as well. One Paris Nice, 
won the Tour of Swiss en route to victory. There he is uh, on the Champs-Élysées. But uh, he is the rider of the future and um, delivered. But uh, I think the big surprise was how the manner of his uh, delivering that win at such a tender age. But uh, a superb, a superb climber and a wonderful ambassador for his home country of Colombia as well. OK, Matt. 12.9 kilometers to go. We are getting ever closer to the start of Alpe de Zwift. Ben Swift still in the breakaway. 17 seconds now. And of course, the man we saw crossing the line with Egan Bernal, holding his hand up on the Champs Elysees last year, was the man who won the Tour de France a year earlier for Team Ineos, what was then Team Sky. It's probably a good time to check in with Geraint Thomas. So Geraint, how are you doing? How you've been? How have you been coping? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. It's uh, obviously strange times. Um, you know, the main thing not knowing what you're really training for, but I think you know the main thing is just trying to mentally stay uh, stay fresh. Really. You say you haven't had a race focus, but you do have a race, of course, the Ineos Zwift race. How's your form for that? How's your tapering coming along? Whoa, tapering's tapering nicely for it. Um, I don't know what the other boy's gonna gonna be like. I've got, uh, I think Dylan's a dark horse. I'm gonna be watching him. But um, no, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just gonna be tough for sure. I think it's gonna be, uh, you know, everyone goes into it a bit sort of like, oh yeah, I'm not too bothered. But as soon as you, as soon as you get going, yeah, it's gonna be every man for himself. That race is going to be on for sure. You're a veteran of Zwift, though, Geraint. Surely that gives you something of an advantage, does it? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to build myself up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I sort of, uh, I know how it all works. And hopefully I can uh, use that to my advantage for sure. But um, I'm not going to be giving the boys any secrets away. That's for sure. Well, I was going to ask you, actually, give a few secrets away. What are the tactics going to be on the day? Uh, no comment, no comment. I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> I know this is serious stuff. You and Egan Bernal are both team leaders. You're the one with the Zwift experience, though. Do you think you'll be running scared a little bit on the day? Oh, for sure. They're all scared of me. On Zwift or on the road, whatever, wherever it is. But no, I think uh, I'm pretty nervous, to be fair. But uh, oh, it should be good fun. Today's race takes you up a climb that you're very familiar with in the real world. Um, have you ever tackled Alp du Zwift? Do you know how it compares with Alp Duez? I haven't ridden it all before. It's too hard, really. But, uh, <laughs> you know, every time I've done it, it's been brutal. It's just you're either at the front winning or out the back. It's always hard. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, you know, it's nice to, to see the hairpins again. And, you know, obviously it's not the real thing, but it is really realistic, you know, from... Just, you know, when you're riding the flat and then when you're going uphill, it, you know, it does get a lot harder on Zwift. And obviously, you know, 8 to 10% inclines a lot of the way. So um, it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely going to uh, have everyone blowing, I think, by the top for sure. Can't wait to see how Garrett Thomas goes when we come to the meaty part of this climb. You can see now that the road is starting to go uphill. 10% of a gradient here. 11.7 kilometers to go. We are there on Abdu Zwift. 21 hairpin turns to go. And Ian Stannard alongside Chris Lawless remain at the front. But look, we're seeing gaps. Two seconds to Swift. Seven seconds to Ganna. Rowe is about to be brought back by the peloton. And behind Gagan Hart. Worth, Sivakov and Froome. It's just 17 seconds now from the front of the race to behind where you can see the rest of the peloton. Indeed, Ian Stannard up there at the front. And here he is in his quite impressive gym. A more impressive gym than his internet connection, I think. But Ian Stannard there, obviously working hard. Jersey already off. And I know also watching on from a distance in his office, Dave Brailsford is listening. I think in a moment we could probably go and talk to Dave Brailsford. And here is Dave. Dave, what's it like watching your boys in this virtual world? Hey, I'm loving this, actually. It's good to see them all working hard. They've been telling me they're working hard and they've been telling me about all of this. But to be able to actually see them and see them racing again is, is fantastic. I mean, it's great for team morale. Um, and it's just a great thing to be doing at this time. You know, it's, it's, it's a strange time for everybody and, and camaraderie and supporting each other. And the human factor is very, very important at this moment in time for everybody. And anything you can do to connect people together and do things that we can help connect other people together 
for the fans and everybody else, I think it's a, it's a very, very important thing to be doing. Yeah, a lot of people have been looking, really looking forward to seeing some sort of racing this weekend. We've got it. It looks exciting already. Um, there's a little detail on the new kits that everybody's wearing. and It says about something called hands-on. What is this hands-on initiative that you've all been doing? Well, it, it's, um, it's, it's really exciting, actually. Um, so, so Jim Radcliffe, who's the chairman and, and, and owner of Ineos, um, got in touch and he had this idea. He said, look, we, we make all the raw materials that go into hand sanitizer. So he set everybody uh, the challenge and the guys in his company in, uh, in England, in France and in Germany to create a, a brand new production line to create a bottle, bottling facility for hand sanitizer, to make hand sanitizer in those three countries. Let's make it in 10 days and let's deliver it free of charge into the NHS, to the health workers, to the hospitals in France, to the hospitals in Germany, in Belgium, and get it out and support uh, the whole the people who need it the most. And um, he, he had a chat and he got in touch and he said, could we as a team take on the distribution that, that part of the business and do the hospital side, get it out there, get all the orders, get it all sorted out. And so we took that on with a, with a, you know, with a, with a great appetite, really, because for us to be able to do something for the community, do something in general, do something to support Ineos as well, and such a great project is, uh, is it, well, it's just a, it's, it's a real privilege to be able to get involved, you know. Brilliant. And to be honest, you're doing a lot for cycling fans as well today. A lot of people tuning in from all around the world, as well as the, the many more important health initiatives that you've just been talking about as well. You're putting smiles on people's faces. I can see that Ben Swift is going pretty well up that 10% gradient at the minute. He's pulling out a bit of a gap. Just before we leave you to watch the last 10 kilometres, Dave, any predictions? Uh, well, I think Dylan Van Baal has been uh, been training pretty well, I'd say, and, uh, and and maybe Eddie Dunbar. Keep an eye on Eddie. I think the guys at sea level definitely got an advantage over the guys at altitude. That goes without saying. So uh, I think uh, I'd, I'd be watching one of those two. Well, so Dave Brailsford, thanks for joining us, and we might hopefully be able to thanks, see you a little guys. later on with a reaction to whoever wins. Thanks for your support. Thanks, guys. Brilliant to hear well, from the team boss there, Matt. And I know you've probably been keeping an eye for us on what's happening on the road, Matt. We've got 10.5 kilometres to go. We're under the meaty part now. I think the last time I saw we were through, was it hairpin number 19? Yeah, you can see that on the, on the right. The riders will have that information on screen. I mean, the, the wonderful thing about uh, the way that on the Zwift platform, they've broken down this climb. Blimey, just look at the state of uh, Rowan Dennis's hairdo then. So I just caught a glimpse of what looked like a wild man from Borneo. Rowan Dennis is moving up the, the field, but with a uh, most interesting hairdo. But no, you are right, Rob. All of these, uh, the riders will get a countdown onto the, on the hairpin. They'll also get each, each hairpin will be timed as well. Um, and it is pretty much an exact replica of Alpha As we can, for the first time, see the double world time trial champion is kicking out 460 watts, which is hovering, Rob, at around 6 watts per kilogram, just about to catch up Ben Swift, who's had a pretty good history on this climb. Remember a couple of years ago, Rob, when he was second to Peter Kenyak uh, on Alpha in the Dauphiné? Yes, he was. I think they were running at the other side then, and it was a really, really difficult uh, mountain stage. We talk about the Dauphiné as well. Dave Brailsford mentioned Dylan Van Bala, who is, let's not forget, a mountain stage winner in the Dauphiné. As we're going back to the British champion Swift, and look at that, 594 watts there briefly put out. He's pedalling away. The heart rate's quite high as well, 170s, 180s now. And this is a hellish climb. Like you said earlier on, you and I rode it yesterday. I'll tell you what, thank, thank goodness for that group ride function on Swift. I'd have been dropped a long, long way away. Yeah, definitely. That was, that was quite a good, uh, what Rob's talking about there. There is the ability on Zwift, you can invite uh, some, some friends or a little group of riders along. But regardless of the power that you're outputting, you all actually stay together at the same speed. And, and we were both pretty thankful for that, as you said, Rob. So we did do a recon with the rest of the team and a couple of the coaches as well, which was a, a really good insight in, into this climb, the way it ebbs and flows, the hairpins. But look at this, there's a, an attack. Dennis now goes clear. The man with the longest hair in virtual pro cycling, it appears. I had a little chat with him the other day, or yesterday, should I say, and he's very, very keen to try and do a bit of a ride here and uh, has gone very, very early on. I think the big question is, Rob, well, can he maintain this sort of output? Well, Rowan Dennis is also one of the riders riding at altitude. Not as high altitude as the guys over in Colombia, but he is in Andorra, the micro state between France and Spain. Dennis is there alongside Worth and Swift at the moment. 
And as we just saw, and we can see on screen again, Rowan Dennis's hair in real life bears no resemblance to that wig he's wearing in the virtual world. Yeah, I think he's been having a little fun playing around with his avatar there, as you say. Spinning away, you can see he's spinning quite a high cadence, 94 revs per minute at the moment. 5.8 watts per kilo is what he's pushing. And the gaps behind are starting to open up. We can see Chris Froome, the four-time Tour de France winner, move up into fourth place. Yeah, you can but just see Eddie Dunbar. Alongside Dennis, Cameron Wirth is also sitting on his wheel. Yeah, Cameron Wirth still putting out, you know, putting out some big power there. 97 RPM. And when you think about Dennis, we think, oh, he had a, he had a, a problematic year last year, but still came back to win the, uh, the time trial, defend his World Time Trial Championships. Um, but when you look back further to last year, he was uh, second overall in the Tour of Switzerland and lost a lot of weight, rode very well, only finished, I think it was a handful of seconds behind Egan Bernal. So on his day, we know that Rowan Dennis is a superb climber. S several years ago, won on Mount Baldy as well in, uh, in the Tour of California. So as well as being a really climb well. And we're looking at Cameron Worth there as, as well, Matt. He's pushing out a, a pretty strong wattage. He's an interesting character, Cameron Worth. As I said at the start, he was an ex-pro cyclist for a while. Signed to replace Vasil Kirienka at short notice at the start of the year. But I also know that he knows quite a few of the Ineos riders well. And even when he was just in his triathlon career in the last few years, he was training quite a lot with them. Yeah, I, yes, he was. He, he always stayed in touch with the team and members of the team and has always quite clearly kept himself in very, very good shape indeed. But it's very unusual, a quite unorthodox re-entry back to ride at World Tour level after bowing out way back in, in 2014. But he considered such such a strong rider, such a likeable fellow, that he's fitted seamlessly back into the team. He's just dropped off the wheel of Rowan Dennis there. Dennis really setting a ferocious pace and still a very long way to go. We estimate, Rob, that the riders would take, just for the climb itself, around 40 to 45 minutes. I think we took about 58 minutes yesterday just to do the 12 the 12 uh, the 12 k's just shows you how tough how difficult this climb is but look 20 seconds is the gap for our two leaders and it's building you can see that castro viejo is chasing one of the best chasers and this type of mountain terrain behind eddie dunbar in fourth at 22 seconds there's kviatkovsky and sivakov moving to the front Froome is still up there as well as the seconds also start to build up between the group behind interesting to see actually how together the group behind is and if we've lost any riders from of course what was a 30 rider strong peloton at the start of the day this is worth 36 years of age still sitting on rowan dennis wheel Worth, who in his professional cycling career has been a very, very solid domestique, but has failed to win a single bike race so far. And we all know that Rowan Dennis has won plenty on the road. He's just opening a little bit of a gap again. Dennis is a two-time world time trial champion. Yeah, he's uh, certainly a, a consummate rider against the clock, can really focus. It's a uh, riding time trial as well. You don't just need a big engine. You need the ability to focus. You, you need the ability to block everything else out and you need the ability to suffer. And Rowan Dennis can certainly suffer. And he's actually starting to gap Cameron Worth, a fellow countryman, two Aussies out in front at the moment. But Worth, perhaps having to put in some big surges to try and stay in contact, still only one second adrift as we head up to another 11% section here. The gradient really starting to bite here. And 25 seconds back to Jonathan Castro-Viejo and Eddie Dunbar, Sivakov as well, Kwiatkowski. So a lot of the team leaders clearly riding very, very well. And good to see Chris Froome hovering around seventh position. Well, on Abdu Zwift in April, you get snow. Interesting to see what the weather's like a bit further up as well, because we had little bits of wind blowing off some of the more exposed hairpins when we were climbing up yesterday. You can see that Dunbar there on one of the easier sections as we now look at Chris Froome. Chris Froome down in 10th place at 26 seconds, sitting just behind the group on the right hand side. And of course, Froome with that awful accident he had at the Dauphiné last year, making his way back. He's now been racing again in the UAE Tour before we had the suspension of uh, life as we know it around the world a few weeks ago. But Froome riding from the south of France. Interesting to see exactly how he goes once we start a game, Matt. And Chris Froome, you don't really need to introduce him, do you really? Four times Tour de France winner, looking for number five. Two times a Vuelta winner. One times a Giro winner two years ago with that wonderful performance on the Colle delle Finestre. Uh, for Chris Froome, it's going to be a big year, isn't it, Matt, when we get racing again? 
Yeah, I mean, we don't know exactly what's going to happen uh, throughout the well, throughout this year, but uh, it it is a big year. It's a big year for a lot of riders, but especially Chris Froome. But uh, the thing that that uh, struck me in that 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 lovely little interview with Orla a few minutes ago is the fact that, that Chris Froome seemed very relaxed. He is uh, clearly he deals very well with extreme circumstances. He's a family man now. He's very pragmatic, but he was smiling. And um, I think to go back to what Dave Brailsford was saying as well, this is probably one of the first times that the team have ever had the opportunity to ride together apart from on a training camp as a unit. And to see Chris relaxed, riding his bike, clearly he's got a reasonable level of fitness. I mean, look at the numbers that he's putting out at the moment, still hovering between five and six watts a kilogram, only 30 seconds behind Rowan Dennis, who is flying up this mountain, eating this tarmac up. But no, good to see Froome back on his bike and riding well and putting out some very, very respectable numbers. It would be great to see him back racing on the road very soon. Yeah, we're looking at Rowan Dennis here now, putting five seconds into Cameron Wurf. And just while we were talking about Chris Froome there, there's been a change in the race situation behind Matt. If you look at that graphic on the right-hand side, there is now a nine-second gap between the group, including Froome. It's Castro Viejo, Dunbar, Sivakov, Kwiatkowski, Sosa, Froome and Rodriguez, the young Spaniard, with now a 10 second gap from the next group led by Owain Dool. So we're seeing a selection. Here it is on the screen right now. And Sivakov, as well as Froome, is another man to watch, isn't he? Yeah, Pavel Sivakov, only 22 years of age, in a real standout rider, had an amazing season last year, finished just inside the top 10, ninth, in fact, in the Giro d'Italia, wore the best young riders jersey for a while, but then took out the Tour of Poland on the, on the overall and the, the Tour of the Alps as well. Great climber and a, a lovely chap as well, but very, very hungry. We know he's in good shape. That's why he's one of the team leaders and looking good at the moment, putting out some big, big numbers. And as, as I say, we can see the gaps on the right-hand side. And now that little lightning bolt just shows that the riders are on smart trainers, all of these riders on Wahoo kickers. And that uh, little stat there, 4.5, that shows how many watts they're actually putting out per kilogram at the moment. And there is Pavel Sivikov with a headband on, looking good. Pavel Sivakov, of course, a man from uh, the south of France. That's where he grew up. He was born in Italy, in the Veneto region, of course, to two former professional cyclists. His parents, both Russian international cyclists. That's why he's had a bit of a, a life around Europe, as we see Dennis now at the front. The man has been doing really well in his Ironman since he left professional cycling. Uh, Cameron Worth left at 15 seconds behind. Rowan Dennis, though, putting time into everybody else. And wow, what a performance this is turning into. In the meantime, Geraint Thomas is in a group that now has a 20 second delay on the chasing group. So Geraint Thomas at over a minute behind Rowan Dennis. Yeah, it's still a long way to go though. Dennis, yeah, he said he wanted to kind of really try and tear things up today, but uh, Geraint Thomas, this is the thing. We know how Geraint Thomas likes to ride. All of these riders have different attributes, different way of tackling different sorts of terrain. Riders, rulers, riders who excel in the high mountains, the punchers like Michal Kwiatkowski. But Geraint Thomas knows, doesn't he, how to win on this climb. Back-to-back -back stages in the Tour de France that he went on to win overall. If there's anybody who can win on this climb, it in, is going to be Geraint Matt, Thomas. Well, you're on that subject of back-to-back -back stages of the Tour de France. It was on this very mountain well Abduez in real life Abdu Zwift here of course and there he is in, in the yellow jersey at that point you mentioned it was back-to-back -back wins he won the day before hadn't he in the Alps and this was pretty incredible making his way back onto Stephen Karlsvey could attack from a long long way back and once again